Hey everyone, this is Kaptan Baha. I often get questions asked about flight training. People wonder, should I go to a college to get a flight training to become a pilot? Should I go to a big flight school and not worry about the college degree? Well, today I'm going to introduce you to somebody that has done neither of those. I'm going to introduce you to Christy Wong, who actually did a very unconventional approach to flight training. You know her from her Taken Off channel in, on YouTube. You know her from her In The Hangar series, and you know her as Pilot Christy on Instagram. So without further ado, Christy Wong, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your Captain Baha speaking. Hey everybody, this is Baha, Captain Baha, and uh, I am here in uh, Wichita, Kansas with our fly-in ACCA event. 2020, first time it's happening. It's an Aviation Content Creators Award event. I'm going to be here only for a day and a half, but everybody is going to be sticking around for the whole weekend. So here I am with a wonderful pilot that you've been watching on YouTube or following it on Instagram for some time. And Christy. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. So we're standing in front of the aircraft that everybody thinks that it's your aircraft. Can you tell us about the aircraft a little bit more? Yeah, this is my aircraft, actually. This is the Wong Warrior. Yeah, she's a 1981 Piper Cherokee Warrior II with the 180 horsepower uh, upgraded engine. Famous Wong Warrior. So how did you get into flying? Uh, I've actually always been interested in flying, wanted to do it my whole life, uh, but grew up super poor and had to get another career that would eventually bankroll me being able to pay for all of the flying, all of the 100 low lead that I burn. And once I started, I didn't stop. <laughs> Here I am. It's amazing how many stories start like that. I did not have enough money, but at the same time, I was working this X job and that paid for this addiction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was actually um, an allergy specialist before. So uh, three years, zero to hero, and uh, I was hired as an airline pilot. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, with the current climate. But in the meanwhile, I have the Wong Warrior. So is there a problem if you, uh, if I asked you, uh, what airline do you fly for? Uh, I typically don't go super public with it. I'll just say I'm at a regional carrier and I fly one of the really nice regional jets. Okay. Is it okay if I ask you what equipment it is? Uh, it's an Embraer 175. Nice. I love those airplanes. I have thousand hours in them and, uh, and 190s. Right now, I'm flying 747, but I won't mention the airline. How's that? Um, so, um, what does it take for a person like you who's determined and does everything in her power to uh, just basically accomplish this dream? It takes a lot of discipline. Uh, it's one of the most common questions I'm asked is, how do you stay so motivated? And the answer is, I don't. I mean, I don't just wake up motivated every day to do this, but I am very, very disciplined. And that's really what got me through that three years of flight training and building those 1,500 hours. Any roadblocks on the way? Oh, plenty. Um, I mean, the weather, maintenance, you know, the everything. Um, weather was probably the biggest one. Um, and of course, there is that, that lack of motivation where you wake up some days and you're like, man, I really just want a day off. But you have to push through that and keep going. Um, Fortunately, there were a few times where the weather or maintenance forced me to take some downtime, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that was nice. It actually all works out in the end, but really, that's what it boils down to. So, um, let me ask you a little bit more about your career path. So, did you go to a big name, big, uh, so many th gazillion amount of airplanes flight school, or did you do it somewhere local? No, I did my training all part 61. So uh, basically it's, you know, I did not go to like a big name box, you know, flight school. I did it with a private CFI, uh, my husband, Steve, and um, he did all of my training except for my multi-engine. What I love about stories like this is the fact that people like you chose an airline career, but they did not go to a big name school and they just basically sunk their teeth into GA world. Yeah. And do you think that that helped you or that hurt you during your airline training? Honestly, I think there's pros and cons to both. I think that, uh, airplanes, sorry. I think <laughs> that, um, I think that some of those big box schools, uh, as you want to call them, they get you through the program very, very quickly, but at a very high cost. Um, I did it because I wanted to do, I wanted to be smart about it, um, in terms of finances and, and whatnot. And 
So I was able to bankroll it. I mean, again, I just, I, I made myself a curriculum and I stuck with it. So that's how I did it. But there's pros and cons to both. I don't think there, it just depends on the person. Um, some people thrive in a 141, which is the you know bigger school. So yeah. They'll thrive in a 141 environment. Whereas I was disciplined enough to be able to thrive in a 61 environment. Well, I mean, everybody, this is what you need to learn about learning to fly is the fact that there is no single cookie cutter solution to learning to fly. It worked out great for Christy. It worked out great for me when I was going through the training. But some people, they like the 141 environment. There is nothing wrong with that either. But at the same time, whatever you are going to enjoy the flying the most is the one that counts, I guess. No, is that correct? Absolutely. It's a journey. You have to enjoy it. If you're, I mean, it, it takes work and there's going to be moments that you don't enjoy it but on the whole you should enjoy the journey i look back on it and i have no regrets about my path awesome so uh how'd you start on the youtube uh i accidentally fell into it um i'm just so passionate and so enthusiastic about flying dan was considering um starting the channel or i think he had just started the channel he wanted to start uh in the hangar and because of my enthusiasm and my personality he asked me if i would do it with him we went flying a couple of times and got to know each other and I was like sure no problem not thinking it would go anywhere or be anything and now here we are you know thousands of subscribers later and growing every day um it's been an amazing experience and I now I'm at a point where uh oh wow. there's a B2 ahead <laughs> Jeez, B17 or 29 I think 29 it's a B29 flying above us I don't know if you were able to catch it or not that's a salute for you, Christy. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Perfect interview for our channel. So what's the what's the next step for your channel? Uh, we're just, we're growing. We're come to event, coming to events like this. We're engaging with the fans. We're, you know, kind of, um, telling stories through the lens of a camera. Just all sorts of different stuff, you know. Um, I'm always open to new flying adventures. Uh, that's what I like. I know Dan likes that, too. What makes this so great um, Dan and I have got such a great partnership in this, uh, you know, channel because he is filmography first and aviation second, whereas I am aviation first and filmography second. So we find that happy medium and it, we are, we're able to come up with a really great balance and, uh, that's why I love this channel so much. What, what would you recommend to the people that they want to start out right now, like tomorrow? Is it a good time to start flying? Is it a bad time? What should they do? Well, I mean, it really depends on what your mission is for the flying. But if you want to fly to fly, um, I highly suggest it. It's the most amazing feeling in the world, just being able to take an airplane up into the sky. I mean, physics is amazing. I could go on and on about how great <laughs> flying is. But what I will say is go get your medical. Make sure that there's no restrictions prohibiting you from being able to get that uh, private pilot certification. Go get your student pilot cert, make sure everything's clear there, and then find a CFI that you connect with that can, you know, really help you. Because there, it's very challenging at times. It's not always going to be easy, and, um, you know, you're going to need somebody that's going to be able to hold your hand and push you through it at the same time. And I'm so glad that I was able to find not only my husband, Steve, but a series of uh, CFIs along the way that were willing to step in and help me when I got stuck, you know, when I plateaued. You know, they were able to find the right balance to push me through it. It's amazing how uh, a good instructor, a good CFI can help you through. Well, that was about it. So let's talk about your channel. Tell people what channel they need to subscribe to. It's so um, the channel is www.youtube.com forward slash taking off. We do a couple of different segments on there. Taking off, of course, being the big one. And that's typically mm -hmm. where we go up in the airplanes. We also have another show that we do in the studio called In the Hangar. And that's what we're filming this weekend. So I love that show. We're part of the taking off team. In the Hangar is the show. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And it was a pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. Test, test. All right. Here we go. That's going to wreck a heaven. Wow. Beautiful Navion is taxiing away as we're trying to get our voices heard. Or what else I can do? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course. That was Let's see. Hopefully, I turn the mic on.